So, in the past year, an indie game called Needy Streamer Overload has completely taken over the entire internet, and literally everyone on the internet has been talking about it. Several of my online friends have also taken a liking to the game, and my friend Goldie has even called it her favorite video game of all time. Because of this, when I heard that RT Game had played Needy Streamer Overload on Twitch, I figured that it is finally the perfect time to talk about this amazing underrated game and how hype it is that RT Game has finally played it. Before we get into that, if you guys are excited for this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I make a lot of content like this. You'll be helping out a small creator and I am thankful to all you guys for supporting my channel. So what is Needy Streamer Overload? And how did it become so popular? Well, essentially, Needy Streamer Overload is a psychological horror visual novel. Um, essentially, the storyline behind the game is that there is this girl named Aim who she's like this mentally ill girl who like just got out of high school and her lifelong dream is to become a streamer and get a million subscribers within a month. And she gets the help of her friend named P-Chan to help her achieve that goal. And it's the reason it's a psychological horror game is because apparently the game prides itself and the main selling point of the game is that the game apparently has no happy endings. Like it, like every single ending in the entire game something bad happens and this goes into why i think it's so popular is because if you think about it, ever since doki doki literature club came out anime style psychological horror games have been really really popular like three examples i'll give are doki doki literature club amori and this game which is knee streamer overload like these three games are all anime style psychological horror games and they've all done really really well and i've actually played amori at one point and that game goes super hard um, and Needy Streamer Overload, from what I've seen from RT Games playthrough on the game, I think it is super, super, super cool to see just the amount of depth to the storyline and how many, how, like the end, each ending of the game goes super hard. And they're all super unique, but they're also just super crazy. And I think this is a way to make it, guys. This is a way to make a psychological horror game, is to have multiple endings and have them all be vastly, vastly different, but they all have a similar impact. I think that is a great thing. Like, if you are a game developer and you want to make a psychological horror game, make something that does what Needy Streamer Overload does, and have there be multiple endings, and they're all, like, very, very different. Like, don't make two endings that are, like, similar to each other. Like, make them all different. I think that's one of the main selling points of it, is that there are multiple different endings, and they all have a very similar effect. That's really cool, and, you know, the fact that a lot of YouTubers have been making content on this game ever since the game came out, and people have been talking about it non-stop, I think that is one of the reasons that this game is so freaking popular. I mean, it's really cool to see all these people getting into this game. Like I said in my Minecraft video for DB Geek, um, when, whenever a new IP comes out, it always catches a few people off guard. Um, but the key to being immune to this is to always be open to trying new things. I think that is the main thing. Like, Needy Streamer Overload, people might not trust it because it's from like a new IP, but if you are open to trying new things, I think this game has a lot to offer and when you 100% complete the entire game, I think you will be a different person than when you started the game. And I think that's a very good thing. I think that's a really cool thing. So I want to go into, obviously it's hype that RT Game has played Needy Streamer Overload. It is a game that I feel like a lot of people were not expecting him to play. Um, and I want to go into why I think he played it because I think there are there could be several reasons as to why he did the main reason I think he played it and this is kind of one that he hinted at um, during his live stream was that he's a streamer himself 
right? And I think the reason he played it was because he wanted to play a game that plays on the idea of streamers being like parasocial and like the whole like online stratosphere of things i guess maybe that was that was his kind of goal so he maybe was browsing steam looking for games that could apply to this kind of thing and when he saw a needy streamer overload he was like this is perfect and then he scheduled a stream for it he secured a spot for the game and did a 100 percent playthrough on stream i think that is what his main goal with the game was which honestly, I think that is a great way to convey a message, but it's also a great way to get audience interaction with RT Game, continually playing underrated games that people, most of his audience may have never heard of. I think RT Game, he plays a lot of underrated games. Like, you have to realize, guys, RT Game, and I've talked about this on RT Game videos in the past, he started out as just a normal Minecraft YouTuber, and that was getting him mediocre views, mediocre sub counts, com and compared to what he gets now, right? Like, as soon as he started doing variety content, the numbers just started flowing in. They gave him, he was getting so many views, he was getting so many new subscribers, and I think him changing to variety content was a very, very good idea. Because, you know, YouTube, loves variety creators. I think that is the main thing that, you know, gets variety creators the most rep on YouTube. And that's why variety creators get the most subscribers on YouTube because that's this, it's like there's something for everybody, right? And I think that's one of the beautiful things about making variety content on YouTube is that when someone goes to your channel, they'll find something they like. And I think that is really, really dope to see that kind of stuff happen. Um, that's the main, but yeah, that's the main reason I think that RT Game played, is to kind of play on the whole, like, streamer aspect of it. Um, a couple other things he, that could be contributing to it is that, um, I'll go into this a bit later, but maybe because RT Game has been playing a lot of anime-style games recently, that maybe because he played Persona 5 Royal, because he played Xenoblade Chronicles 2, um, maybe all this contributed down the line to, okay, I'm going to put a little bit of emphasis on these games in the future. Maybe that's it. I don't know, but I think that that could be a very big possibility. Um, maybe he just likes supporting um, smaller game developers, and since the developers of Needy Streamer Overload are relatively unknown i mean they were completely unknown before an e streamer overload so i think maybe he just wanted to give some attention to um underrated game developers maybe that is what he wanted to do but i have a feeling that it's because of the streamer aspect that's uh, out of the three theories i've given i think the whole streamer aspect of it i think that is what the like like the whole embrace the parasocial dynamic i think that's what he was going for with this stream of knee streamer overload um and really i think he did it spot on i think it is a that was a really good call on his part um you know really good pick of games rt game picks some really good games to play i will say guys he's got he packs the variety which i think a lot more youtubers should do um and i was mentioning this earlier on in the video how does RT Game playing Needy Streamer Overload relate to him playing Persona 5 Royal? I think, because I previously made a video on RT Game playing Persona 5 Royal, and I even made a video talking about why he should play Persona 5 X Phantom of the Night, which is that new Persona 5 mobile game that's coming out. Um, I think it can relate to it in several ways. For one, they're both games that I feel like share a huge part of their fan base. They're both games with a very similar aesthetic to them. Um, a lot, like, I know that Goldie, the person who first introduced me to Knee Streamer Overload, she has also played Persona 5 Royal, and she really loved that game. Um, and, you know, I, I, I kind of see a thing where... Needy Streamer Overload and Persona 5 Royal, those two games share a huge chunk of their fan base. It's not something along the lines of like Xenoblade and Fire Emblem, how both those series both both have like literally the same group of people as their fan base. No, it's literally like Needy Streamer Overload and Persona 5 Royal. Like they're games with a very similar aesthetic, but they're very different in the in terms of like what's the word? In terms of um. I can't think of the word, but you guys get what I'm saying, right? Like they're very, they're very, they're very different in logistics, but aesthetically they're the same. They're very similar. 
So if you didn't know anything about who made the two games, if you didn't know anything about when the games came out, if you didn't know anything about what systems the game were on, games were on, you would think that Nii Streamer Overload and Persona 5 Royal were like made by the same person. They were made by, you know, you kind of get, you kind of think these games are very similar in the logistics era, but not like you. you you guys get what I'm saying, right? Like, Needy Streamer Overload shares a huge part of its fan base with Persona 5 Royal. And granted, Needy Streamer Overload hasn't been around as long as Persona 5 has, so maybe Needy Streamer Overload is still blossoming, blossoming as a game, blossoming as a means of content for people. I think a little bit down the line, Needy Streamer Overload will be just as big as Persona 5 Royal. Which also brings me to another topic. <laughs> now, usually at the end of videos, I talk about how does this YouTuber playing this game relate to Mr. Beast and Jacksepticeye's Ultra Reality Smash server. But in this case, I'm stumped. <laughs> I am literally stumped. Because here's the thing. I... I usually say I'm usually pretty ambitious when it comes to how YouTubers playing certain games relate to the Ultra Reality Smash server. However, in this instance, I don't think RT Gameplay Needy Streamer Overload relates to the Ultra Reality Smash server whatsoever. Because think about it, right? There's no fighting in Needy Streamer Overload. There's there's literally none, right? Like it's it, the the main. There's two characters in the game that have a design, and neither of them like fight or anything. Um, there is like psychological horror aspects, but there's not really much fighting in the game, to be honest. Maybe maybe Jacksepticeye will add like Aim, which is the main waifu of the game, and then there's just one other female character who has like white hair and like then like ribbons down her head i don't know what her name is but maybe jacksepticeye could i don't know maybe he could have them as care maybe there'll be like a the separate group of I, I don't know i i just I, I have a hard time believing that this of all things is related to the ultra reality smash server it might be related to the ultra reality smash server outside of needy streamer overload making an appearance in the ultra reality smash server which, don't get me wrong, I think Nii Streamer Overload could make an appearance in the Ultra Reality Smash server. Whether or not it's like a like a playable character appearance, I don't know. But I do think a lot of people would like to play as AIM and the other girl in the Ultra Reality Smash server. I just don't... It, it, the, the thing I'm skeptical about is what about the Smash part of the server? Because you, you think about like every single character would have to take part in the Smash aspect. And if AIM and the other girl don't fight then it, 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 you're kind of running into a roadblock, right? Maybe if the game gets as popular as Doki Doki Literature Club, then it, would, then it could come along because a lot of people want Monica in Super Smash Brothers. But as of right now, I don't see it relating to it too much. But I do think... The thing I am excited about, though, is that RT Game playing Needy Streamer Overload basically confirms that Jacksepticeye has played it too at some point. I mean, we can confirm that Jacksepticeye has played literally every game on the planet, but the fact that RT Game plays it and he made a video and a stream about it, I think that confirms that as of now, Jacksepticeye knows about that game, which I think is really cool. Like, like if you think about it, every single RT ga every single game RT Game played, is something that Jacksepticeye now knows about, which I think is really dope. Um, I'm really curious if Jacksepticeye popped into the stream of RT Games and eStreamer Overload stream, uh, if he like hopped in the chat and started talking. Maybe he could give a little bit of expertise on the game that most people would not be too knowledgeable about. Maybe from a developer aspect, maybe from a story gameplay aspect, I don't know, but I think Jacksepticeye could really lend his lend his thought process to the whole stream um but we won't know and we <laughs> we don't know we we if he didn't then he didn't because rt game probably won't stream it again but if he did then i think that's really dope um and yeah rt game playing needy streamer overload is hype thank you guys for watching this video be sure to subscribe to my channel and as always stay chill everyone